Oh, hey there, girly. My name's Doobie Doobop, AKA Korean Scarlett Johansson, and we're in the beautiful city of Singapore today. So I'm kind of here on a workation kind of situation, and I am so, so excited to be here. Singapore is a melting pot of different cultures. You have Chinese, Malay, Indo, Indian. It really is a city with so much history, and you know what that means. It means there's gonna be a lot of good grubs. Just let a man breathe and just hush so my mind could just see so my mind on the run. At times I feel I can't get enough, but I sip a double cup and I spin a couple of oh, Sending out some love to my blood, to my girl, to my buds, to the homie up above. And no more time for picking up to these fakes who ain't around when the time's getting rough. Six million ways to die, so I spit into this truth when I pray for lies. Everybody wanna talk with all I hear. Good morning. It's currently 10 a.m. It's raining in Singapore and it's humid and hot. I haven't had any coffee, which means that uh, I'm kind of groggy. If there's one thing that's gonna get me throughout this day, it is kaya toast with a lot of butter, toasted with a nice sweet unctuous jam in the middle and some strong hot coffee. That's exactly what I'm craving. And uh, we're gonna make our way to Apsil Long where he's been doing it for ages. We're here in front of Hapsi Long. I feel like I took a time travel machine. This place looks probably exactly the same since 40 years ago. There's the plastic chairs, there's the locals talking, the tiles are old and frayed, but there's a certain charm to it that you can only get here or nowhere else. So, um, Paya Toast. And uh, there's also a lot of people queuing up for the curry puff on the side, so I'm definitely gonna get that too. You know me. I love good food. Can we get three kaya butter toast, two of the soft boiled eggs, or actually, I'll get the set meal. What's special about the coffee here at Hapsi Long is he brews the coffee in a very, very special item, which is uh, pantyhoses. So he pulls the coffee like this and it extracts like the espresso essentially. Another thing that's special about the beans is that they roast the beans in butter. So it gets really creamy, nutty almost, and you get the dark roast flavor. What he does is makes a really strong brew in one of the pots and then dilutes it out with hot water and some condensed milk to make the perfect ratio. He doesn't measure it. It's not in cups or milliliters, but just intuition. He just knows how to make the perfect mixture. Maybe it's a little different each time. Who knows? But it's literally not too sweet, not too bitter. I've never had coffee beans that were roasted in butter before. I was a little skeptical, but this honestly works incredibly well, so. also have the infamous kaya toast. I got the kaya butter toast and you can see the wedge of cold butter inside. 
and this is white bread toasted over charcoal and there's not a lot of places that still do this but this is one of the only places where he still does it like the old way so you get this amazing charcoal flavor as well as the toasted bread the cold butter and a smooth thin layer of kaya jam and in the condiments section we have some uh, dark soy sauce which I'm going to drizzle over like this and the best way to enjoy this is by dipping it into the poached egg mixture right here. Like that. This looks filthy. This looks so filthy in the best way possible. Mm. Holy shit. Don't talk to me. The crunchy toasted bread, the sweet kaya, the cold butter, and the creamy soft boiled eggs with a hint of the soy sauce to add a little more saltiness. One of the most perfect bites I've ever had. And for those who are wondering what kaya is made out of, so kaya is basically a coconut jam. So you get the coconut, caramelize it, um, sweeten it with coconut sugar, and you get this kind of dark caramel noted jam and it's very sweet so you only want to put a very thin layer of it and that's enough to make it sweet this tastes so so damn good i don't know how else to explain it mm. it's so simple yet so indulgent and just a perfectly well balanced bite this is something that i can only get in singapore makes it even more special as well. Fuck. I like butter everywhere. Mm. I could literally just slurp this poached egg as well. Wow. I'm literally chugging this thing right now. Isn't it hot? Not really that hot. I think the sweet condensed milk on the bottom cools it down a lot, so it's perfect to just in the morning and just go. I ordered the butter coffee. On top of the butter roasted beans, he puts a big slab of butter on top of the coffee and it kind of melts, goes down, and then floats back up and the yellow grease and the unctuousness is very, very present here. You kind of see almost like a layer of fat on top. Even for me as a butter lover, uh, this is also a bit on the intense side, but I'm always willing to try new things. Okay, what I didn't realize is that because there's a layer of fat on the top, it gets really, really hot. Okay, so I'm gonna mix it a bit better. Mm. This one's actually less sweet. Maybe his golden ratio is uh, not really a thing. It happens, come on. That's what human touch is all about, right? Surprisingly, I don't really taste the butter much. It definitely works as almost like a natural lip gloss. But with animal fat. So there's that plus. You don't have to moisturize. Okay, right next to the uh, Hapsio Long Kaya Toast, they're making these curry puffs right next door and there's so many people coming in and out, getting them for a takeaway and they look so amazing. I'm gonna go around the corner and get a couple to try. Hi, can I get two curry potato puffs please? Hashtag foodgasm. We got a nod. Inside is a curry potato mixture 
And when you smell it, you get the marsala smell that kind of hits you in the nose. A lot of coriander, some cumin, some turmeric, curry powder. It's a very, very fresh smelling curry mixture. The curry puff is so hot and you can see the blister marks on the outside, which means that it has done its job. You know, I love empanadas or any fried dough that's hard and crisp. And you can also see the layers in between. That means that the fat has been well incorporated so that in between the layers of carbohydrates, there's a bit of fat so that when you drop it in the oil, the fat tries to escape, which then creates the layers. Holy shit, I'm so glad. I tried this before I left Hapsi alone. The potato is warm and hot. It's like mashed potatoes, but with curry added inside. Also a bit of onions, I can see, that's been sweated out to add a little bit more sweetness into it. The creaminess of the potatoes along with the crispy dough is fantastic. I think this is actually one of the best bites I've had in Singapore so far. It's such a cute little joint. There's these three ladies, I think that looks like family because they don't really talk to each other much. I think that indicates that they're family. And um, they're so cute. They're just making these curry puffs, shaping them, they're frying them, they're draining them, they're selling them. And it's constant motion and everyone has a role and it moves so cohesively. And this is sold for a dollar. That's crazy. Like the dough is nothing like I've ever tried before. It almost tastes like wonton crisps. And thinking about all the influences that Singapore has, I'm pretty sure that it probably started off as wonton dough but they uh, incorporated a bit more Indian flavors into it. And this is so amazing. Another good telltale sign that for good food, there's always a queue and uh, it knows no boundaries. That was a bit corny, but fuck it. I'm feeling extra corny today. Mm. I feel like I'm hiking Mount Everest of food. Having this curry puff, ignited a little spice of life for me. And it made me thinking, I want more spice, more curry, more spice. So I'm gonna go to Little Indian. crazy how in Singapore, you know, it's like a 10 minute cab ride and this just looks like a completely different country. Amazing curry smells in the air. There's jewelers, there's money changers, a cell phone machine. The market is booming. There's so much fresh fruit as well. Little India is just a big pop of color. There's so many women wearing beautiful saris with red and gold, as well as the fresh fruit is just vibrant with color. The houses also definitely represent that. There's red, there's yellow, green and blue, so many colors. And it's a really, really vibrant part of the city, both visually as well as the atmosphere. We're gonna go check out one of the more uh, Indian hawker centers and see uh, where people are queuing up. Let's go find some food. in this heat right now. Wow, but it's so beautiful. Like the colors, it just makes my eyes, like I feel like I'm on psychedelics right now. Oh, the heat and the music and the colors, it's just all a blur and a whir. Wow, look at all these produce. The okra looks so fresh. I love that these markets are so like produce heavy and uh, like all the middle-aged women, they're buying the best okras as well. Like what a sight to see. Okay, we're on our way to go um, to the Tekka market. It's where there's a lot more produce. There's a hawker center as well. So we'll grab a bite to eat there and maybe something sweet to cool me down because right now I'm gonna, 
I'm on the verge of passing out from the heat. I'm like sweating profusely, probably because I'm dehydrated. I don't really like water, and I drank a lot of that coffee earlier, and that coffee was strong. We were right in front of Tekka Center all along, and then we took a massive detour to be where we're back. But yeah, we're all on, we're on the right track now. Okay, we're here now at Tekka Center. Three rules to eating. One, eat something where there's a bit of a line and all the locals are eating it. Two, where the food is fresh. And three, where the owner looks a little bit annoyed. Easy. Can I get a masala dosa? Thank you so much, it's 2.30. It's a little bit hectic here. Oh, I'm gonna have a sip of this fresh coconut to cool down. Mm. There's really nothing like coconut water. That cools me down during this heat. Oh, I can't wait to also like scrape off some of the flesh. Although surprisingly, this one really doesn't have much flesh. Mm. I got a little masala dosa. Dosa is a fermented batter of black lentils and uh, rice flour. So you get this incredibly crispy batter. And notice how when he was uh, pouring the batter, it kind of like immediately fizzled up. That's because it's fermented. So same uh, logic as sourdough. It's the yeast in the wild kind of works as a leavener to create all these bubbles and makes it extra airy and light and crispy. Wow, so crispy. I'm gonna dunk it in the lentil doll that they gave on the side as well. This doll has really pronounced um, mustard tea. Uh, yellow split lentils um, dal with a lot of ghee. And ghee is clarified butter, as I'm sure a lot of you guys may know. And this also has a really nice spice mixture to season it. And the little dots that you see here are the mustard seeds, and they add a really nice pop of flavor and texture as well. Wow. Look at the masala inside. So this again is also a potato-based curry spiced with garam masala. So garam masala is like a curry mixture and this time I'm gonna dip it in the spicy sauce as well. Mm, really nice, smoky, not too spicy chili sauce as well. I'm not used to eating with my hands. So um, I'm getting it everywhere and like these people use the dosa as almost like a spoon so that their hands get super clean. Yeah, I'm a major noob, so I'm getting it everywhere. Messy, but absolutely delicious. Again, I'm only messy because I have no skills myself. I'm not really sure what this white sauce is, actually. Let's see. Mm. You know what this tastes like to me? Tofu curds. It's mellow. It evens out the spice. It's very creamy as well, and a bit milky. Fantastic, fantastic. On the side here, I also ordered a puri, 
So puri is a more deep fried batter, fried in one of the kind of like a small wok looking uh, frying pans. And then you pour the batter and then it kind of like puffs up. And then once you take it out of the oil, it deflates down and creates almost like this bowl structure. This reminds me of bread bowls in the US. When you go to like TJI Fridays, like with a gigantic bowl of clam chowder. Is that just me? Is that just me? And this is the same uh, mixture that was put into the dosa as well. If you see right here, you can see the curry leaf that they put in. Incredibly hard to find curry leaf anywhere in Korea. And one of the things that I miss the most about living in Korea is access to good Indian food. I want to move here. I really do. If you're a lover of food, Singapore is definitely the place you have to come and visit because there's so many different types of food that you can try at such a affordable price point as well. And the sheer diversity of it from Muslim food, halal food, Chinese food, Malay food, Indonesian food, Indian food, there's just so many different varieties of good food that's just always readily available. We'll get like one more thing because I'm not gonna be back in Little India for another month or so. Maybe I'll come back. I really wanna go to India. Also, me and Kevin were talking about this just now, but like Singapore is definitely like the most futuristic city I've ever been to. It seems like a scene out of Blade Runner. A future where humanity didn't really fuck up that much. Obviously, I'm sure there's like the bad sides of it too, but on a surface level, having government subsidized hawker centers where rent is stabilized, food is accessible, people are not really cooking much in their houses because the homes are smaller, and just coming down and supporting local businesses. It's a full circle economy, and I can see how this works really well. One of the most deadliest modern pandemics is definitely loneliness. But creating structures like this where you know people are eating together and even if you're living alone, just having a even a basic interaction with the shop owners and eating in a place where you're filled with other people, it's a really nice way to be reconnected with other people as well. And this kind of structure, even though it seems pretty rudimental, like I feel like it's very important for our city to function. Definitely amazed with how all the systems have been set up in Singapore and um, something that I think that should be implemented a lot more in Korea and other places in the world as well. I'm gonna put this back because if you don't put your tray back, you're not a good citizen. Can I get one mee goreng please? One mee goreng. So good. So much wok hay. Wow. Do you see this? I wish I could tell you how amazing this smells. The fire and the smokiness, what Chinese people call like wok hay, the smell of smoke and fire and char and aroma is amazing. It's crazy, crazy. And the color of this is probably what best represents Little India for me. It's vibrant, it has a lot of vegetables, it's a mixture of everything. It's red, there's pineapple, onion, green chili, cabbage, noodles. This to me is what screams Little India in Singapore. Because it's not a completely Indian dish either, it's a dish that's very unique here as well. So inside this, there is flavored with light soy sauce, some MSG, sugar, red food coloring, as well as some vinegar. I'm gonna give it a bite. This is fantastic. Honestly, from the color of it, I was a little skeptical, but then so many people were ordering it that I was like, 
I gotta try this out. How about drinks? Chai tea? Chai tea? Just one chai tea, please. Tea la? Yeah. Tea, tea. Tea? Ice or hot? Hot. Hot, huh? Yes. Tea ping, huh? Tea yeah. hot. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of meat in there as well, and it's mutton, and it's spiced heavily with cumin, but it works. This is, to me, wow. I mean, the way that guy was handling the gigantic wok, constantly stirring and stirring and stirring and stirring, and the light soy sauce being caramelized in the bottom, coming up as smoke, is beautiful. So good. So good. Mm. And the noodles that they use are Chinese egg noodles that are a bit thin, same noodles as chow mein, but Compared to the chow mein in America, you can't compare it. That's just the truth. I wish I could give a better explanation for how smoky and tasty this is. Even though it looks red, it's actually not spicy at all. And there's a nice subtle like green chili that flavors the dish throughout. Thank you so much. As soon as I sat down, we got Mr. Hustler here being like, want a little tea, honey? For a little hot tea? Get it? A little hottie. And um, I ordered a warm chai tea. Ah, oh, Starbucks has nothing on this shit. Creamy and frothy. Like the thing that I look for in chai tea is how frothy it can be. The more air that's incorporated in, the better the spices blossom. The milk is not too heavy and is perfect to drink on a hot summer day. I know it seems idiosyncratic to drink hot on a hot summer day, but sometimes just sweating it out, pure science. Water evaporated, heat lost. So this is beautiful. This is fucking delicious. My God. This is a bite I'm going to remember in Korea. This is a bite that I'm going to remember when I'm hungover also. It's just greasy and smoky. Wow. Mm. This gives me life. I need to come back to Singapore. Four days is not even a fraction to cover the vast food culture that's here in Singapore. I keep seeing this over and over, but this is my favorite bite actually, hands down. I know I lost credibility. I know I did, but like this time, this is actually my favorite bite. It's really good. Once again, I've eaten my soul out in Little India. Very, very full, but we're gonna go check out maybe one more or two, who knows, three, more hawker stalls and more street food. Let's go grab a cab and go to our next location. So I haven't been back in Singapore since I was very, very young. The last time I was here, I was like five years old. I remember eating chili crab with my family, seeing the merlion, and that's pretty much it. And being back as an adult, I start noticing different things. I see the green incorporated architecture, unique urban planning, the clean streets, the water's clean. It is a very different feel from Seoul. My knowledge on Singapore relies mostly on my Singaporean friends. I went to school with a lot of Singaporean kids and I also have a lot of like old friends from college that moved here for banking jobs as well and also in the tech sector. And you can see all the big high rises of like WeWork, HSBC, DBS and I also know that a lot of my Hong Kong friends moved to Singapore you know, after the protests as well. It seems like a very expat-friendly, an immigrant-friendly city. Me living in Seoul, where you know 99% of the population is Korean, this is such an interesting city for me to see. It feels like West meets the East. Is that too antiquated for me to say? I don't know, but it's definitely a very intriguing city. So we're here in front of Old Airport Road Hawker Center and this is one of the biggest and the oldest hawker centers in Singapore. Right now it's about lunchtime and there's a lot of people queuing up for the stalls they love, eating with their colleagues, their friends, their family. Let's go! 
I want something homey and filling. I want something sweet. And I also definitely need something icy to cool me down. Whoa, I want to try a soya bean dessert actually. 14, huh? Soya bean, 14. Uh, Down. So the soya bean drink looks exactly like what I was looking for. So we have some grass jelly, tapioca pearls, jellies of some sort. Mix it around like this. Wow. So it's fresh soy milk that they have in-house. So it's really refreshing, creamy, but not overly indulgent. Very different creaminess from dairy. Because this is like a plant-based milk, it almost has like oat milk flavors without the creaminess because right now it's too hot to be having something really like indulgent. So it's light and sweet and uh, this is pretty good. This is really good actually. I've never had fresh soy milk like this before, so pretty uh, mind-blowing. I would love to actually have a little bit of lunch congee because, I don't know, it's really hot. I've been eat also eating a lot, so I want something that's soothing for my stomach. So um, I'm gonna get some congee today. Can I get the um, century egg congee, please? was six dollars in Singaporean and on top we have the yo chow, uh, the fried dough sliced on top as well as some of the toppings are fried shallots, some ginger, some scallions as well as some sesame oil and white ground pepper and um, on the side I have a light soy sauce condiment here um, to have with it. The thing with congee it seems like a lot of food also but in reality it's so little rice because it's mostly water. The reason why it's so thick and gluttonous is, of course, because of the starch that's in the rice. This is the food that I like to eat when I'm overheated and I don't really have much of an appetite or when I'm sick. Something easy on the stomach. Kanji is a very much a breakfast staple for a lot of Chinese people. It's the food that you eat in the morning because it's not too heavy on the stomach. But for people who you know, want to feel filled and they want to not be hungry throughout the day, especially workers who are doing physical labor jobs, they add a yo chow on top so that it adds an, another layer of extra fat and calories to give them sustenance throughout the day. And we also have the dark century egg right here. I love century egg because it's such a distinct flavor of its own. So basically you take the duck egg, let it ferment essentially, and it gets very, very basic in terms of pH, not in terms of white girl Starbucks. That process creates ammonia, which really creates kind of a funky smell, but you get this incredibly dark umami note, um, kind of similar to fish sauce, but in a more eggier note. To me, it tastes almost like 26 month old Parmigiano. It's the same notes, just different. Okay, I'm gonna try a bite. Very good. Wow, I didn't have to put the soy sauce in actually. I should have tasted it beforehand. Oh, so yummy. The little bite of century egg that's embedded in the porridge adds like a really nice salty kick. 
And the porridge itself is not just water and rice. It's actually a broth, which means that the crunchy is flavored incredibly well throughout. It's like drinking a nice bowl of soup, but a little thicker and creamier. Mmm. It's absolutely delicious. Have one with the yo chow. This is like carbs on carbs. The yo chow absorbs all the brothy, creamy congee, as well as some of the century egg on top. It's not too crispy. The point of the yo chow is actually not crispiness, but it's to be a sponge to add another layer of textural element to the congee that could otherwise just be too creamy. But with the egg and the crunchiness of the scallions, the sharp notes of the white pepper, this is an incredibly well-balanced, well-textured meal. Just brings it over another notch. Wow. Mm -hmm. Bring my tongue. Oh. Ah, I've always wanted to try ota fish cakes in between banana leaves. I've always wondered what they would taste like. He also doesn't have much customers, so I would love to support him. We'll do prawn and one crab meat. We got these otas. So ota is like a fish paste that's um, grilled inside a banana leaf. And during the grilling process, it kind of steams within like this. And you can think of it as almost like Asian tamales. This one's the prawn one. Very flavorful. So inside, I think there's some um, fake shrimp meat. And it tastes very, very strongly of like the shrimp intestines. It's a bit creamy. It's very spicy. There's a lot of the almost rendang paste that flavors the fish cakes within. Super interesting texture. Very good. Although it's not my favorite, and it is pretty interesting. Now I'm definitely craving something sweet and a bit crunchy. Can we get one original peanut and one original coconut, please? So I got a kue right here for dessert. Kue, if you're not familiar, is kind of a Singaporean version of stuffed pancake. So you make a large crepe with milk, sugar, egg, and flour, and instant yeast. You get the sponge layer cake, and then you fold it on top of each other. Um, I guess kind of like a calzone. And um, this one has uh, brown peanuts, and I could see that these are, you know, the homemade peanut filling inside. And another thing that I noticed straight off the bat is how evenly caramelized the batter is. This is achieved by adding honey into the batter. Kind of similar to the Japanese dorayaki, where it's completely brown hotcakes. It creates room for Maillard reaction. I know, fancy words, but it basically just means that honey allows for caramelization because it's a really great source of carbohydrates and proteins, and those will caramelize well. Enough with the fancy lingo. I am going to take a bite. It's much more dense than a pancake. It almost has like a gluttonous texture to it, halfway between a mochi and halfway between a pancake. It has that really nice gluttonous chew, which makes a really nice like nutty sweetness that you get from mochis, as well as the spongy texture. And in between with the peanut filling, this is a really, really interesting bite. I can see myself wanting a nice hot cup of coffee right with this during like tea time or something. Pretty good. Mm. And then this one is the coconut one. Interesting. So inside is um, shredded coconut. I expected the coconut to be almost like a kaya jam type of texture when I was imagining this food, but it's actually incredibly dry and flaky. Um, and it's a little bit messy. It kind of looks like carrot cake, honestly. Not my favorite. I mean, I think it's okay for me to say that. I prefer the peanut one much better just because it's really nice and creamy and it reminds me of, you know, peanut butter sandwich that I used to bring to school. But nonetheless, pretty good. Oh, it's been a long day. I think I'm actually gonna head back to the hotel and relax a little bit before we head on over to the next hawker center, which I've been looking forward to so much at 
Maxwell. So I'll see you guys then. chicken rice this was eight dollars look how glossy everything is as you saw the stall owner he got the chicken that was hanging chopped it right in front of us we have some baby bok choy we also have some freshly sliced cucumbers not a big cucumber fan but still I can see how it works conceptually we also have this really amazing glossy bowl of rice on the side and some broth as well and three different types of sauces let me just try the sauce first ah oh, spicy acidic fermented fish sauce flavors that i'm getting as well very nice Ooh. Mm. it kind of tastes like an inside of a xiaolong bao with a lot of ginger i think it's ginger with um chicken stock I'm not sure. And we also have this very sticky, which I'm assuming is dark soy sauce. Wow, that's really good. Very, very good. Oh my god, it's so juicy. Look at that. So soft. The skin is perfectly intact. For people who've never tried Hainanese chicken before, it might just look like really boring, boiled chicken. But trust me, it's not. It's really not. It's something truly special. Okay, ah, my God, fresh bite. I need to take one more bite before I give any commentary because or else it's gonna be illegal. So the key to making good Hainanese chicken is all in the stock. What you do is gently cook the chicken in the chicken broth so it absorbs all the flavor. Kind of cooking it in its own broth so that it really aggrandizes the chicken flavor. It's juicy, it's moist, it's subtle, but it's incredibly complex. Also drizzle with a tiny bit of sesame oil to really bring out the nuttiness of it. I'm gonna try a bok choy as well. Just simple parboiled bok choy dressed in oyster sauce, a little bit of the breadcrumb mixture to give some dimension and texture. It looks like very little, like very unimportant, but it really just adds another layer of depth and difference in texture. Same with the rice. This isn't just like normal rice. You also cook the rice in the chicken broth itself. So you have the chicken broth on the side, the rice cooked in chicken broth, and we have the chicken also poached in chicken broth. And it's just, there's just chicken broth on steroids. The rice alone is so delicious. This time, I think I'm gonna go with the ginger sauce. Oh my god. 
Pineary chicken rice is definitely just one of my favorite, favorite foods. It reminds me of so many like Korean foods as well. It just shows that there's no culture that dislikes chicken. It's so good, like stock and everything. What I really especially love is that all parts of it are used to flavor and it's just very nuanced. Yeah, it's cheap, but it's incredibly delicate and just well made. Oh, I can't wait to try more food here. I love this atmosphere. The fans whirring on the top of the ceiling, people just enjoying their food, drinking a glass of cold beer and some fruit juices, people talking. It's a very communal experience. And I love eating outdoors. And to have a facility like this, where people come together on the round tables and share food from all these different stalls, is truly something unique and special. Hi, um, can I get the uh, $10 four combo set? chicken rice, this stall right behind me had so many people queuing up and naturally if there's a long line, I'm curious. So I ordered the four combo set, this is $10 and we get crispy pork belly, some char siu, soy sauce chicken and roast duck and on the side there is some pork cracklings as well as some onions and coriander on top drizzled with dressing for the soy sauce chicken. It's like a dark soy sticky sauce as well as an egg on the side. So this was $10, this was 50 cents, the egg was 15 cents and um, what a feast. We have some uh, pickled peppers and this one acidic chili sauce as well as this seems like dobenjang it is not dobenjang it tastes like fermented spicy anchovy sauce and as always we gotta do a little asmr segment delightful wow I'll do another one for the pork crackling. Just dissolves in your mouth like popcorn. Holy shit. It's so good. It's so good. Super salty on the outside, probably because they uh, salted it heavily to draw out the moisture. Bake at a high temperature so that the skin almost becomes puffed and it seems almost fried. It is so crispy. Let me just too good to be true. This tastes like adulthood. A little salty, a little crunchy, but at the end of the day, it's indulgent and nice. I don't even know if this makes sense, but I'm happy and I'm talking, okay? Okay, next I'm gonna have some soy sauce chicken. Wow. These people, they definitely know how to cook their chicken. It's so soft and succulent. And the skin gets this beautiful dark char. Usually this is from dark soy sauce that it gets this like sheen of color. And the sauce that's drizzled over, it looks overly salty, but it's not at all. It's a mixture of the chicken stock as well as the drippings with some dark soy sauce. And a lot of people think that dark soy sauce is gonna be really salty, but it's actually not. It's less salty than light soy sauce. Now onto the char siu. The char siu seems to be also uh, smothered in like a red paste. Wow, beautiful poison glaze on top. Sweet, 
and the char on the outside gives it an almost a little burnt flavor, but it adds another dimension as well. It's so soft, like usually what most people do with char siu is they overcook the shit out of it, but this is actually so soft and sweet. I can understand why there were so many people, especially locals, getting this. Like it is so good. This is actually one of the best char siu I've ever, I've ever had. It hangs from the little hook like a piece of bacon and he just saws it off with his gigantic cleaver as soon as you order. And this whole experience is just another worldly. Um, roast duck. Our cheeky little cucumber here. Fuck off. Have some of the chili sauce. Is this the best thing to do for my heart in terms of cholesterol? Probably not. But is this good for my soul? Yes. Really, really amazing bang for your buck. Like $10 for this is just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm gonna have a little bit of the egg as well. So this is hard boiled egg that's been braised in the same sauce, I'm assuming, as the uh, soy sauce chicken. Not my favorite, super duper overcooked, but it's okay, it's okay. I'm still gonna finish it. Oh, I really need this drink. It's so hot today. I need something cold and refreshing. Mm. Can I get one sugar cane, one lychee, tiger beer, and one barley? have one of those like juicers but it's kind of like almost like a cement roller it, it was super intense and they don't just do it once they do it twice thrice to really extract all the juices it's 32 degrees right now in Singapore it's humid as fuck and this just tickles the very back part of my brain that I didn't even know existed. It just scratches it. It's sweet, it's icy. It's not too sweet either, where you know it kind of makes you feel a little Ugh. It's just the perfect amount. It tastes like coconut water. I like it. What I'm really curious about is actually the barley though. This one, I, I don't know. They said it was homemade, so I got it. This one I don't like. It's neither sweet nor cold. Finally, the lychee juice. Some water, some ice, and some canned lychees. Oh, yes. Actually, my favorite right now of the three. Mmm. So good. So good. I like this the most. It's really good. It's a pretty smart idea to use canned lychees and like the sugar syrup to flavor uh, the bevy. Pretty smart. I'm gonna start doing this in Korea. Damn, that was a horrible pour. That's so embarrassing. Um, can I get one um, laksa, one curry chicken, and one rendang chicken with nasi lemak? I love when the good news coming in on a day to day. Already know what's happening now.
nasty. Yeah, I see light at the end. I ended up ordering a lot. After refreshments, I did feel refreshed enough to eat more. When in Vegas, you gamble. Or no, when in when it when in Rome. Okay, I'm gonna stop with all the metaphors. Clearly, my mind is somewhere else, and it's on laksa. So laksa is Indonesian noodles, and laksa was my ultimate hangover food whenever I lived in New York. There was a little laksa place um, in East Village that I went to with my friend pretty often. And ever since then, I haven't had any because it's hard to find Indonesian or Southeast Asian food in Korea. So I'm very, very, very happy about it. Noodles are rice noodles that are circular, similar to the noodles that Vietnamese people use for bumbo hue. It makes much of the slurping very satisfying. Mm. Wow. So the base of a good laksa is creamy coconut milk. Dressed on top with sambal. This is a fish-based sambal, so it adds a really nice, deep umami flavor to the broth. The creaminess of the coconut broth, as well as a little sweetness with the salty pungentness of sambal. Literally in heaven right now. Fried tofu skin. And the tofu skin, it gets really porous. So when you put it on top of the noodles and pour the broth over, it like absorbs all the flavors of the broth and it's just like a flavor bomb. We also have some bean sprouts, some fish cakes, some more fish cakes, egg, and cocktail shrimp. Because why not? And then next, I ordered curry chicken. And I want to say like curry chicken is a very staple Indo-Malay household food. It's chicken that's been braised like low and slow, also with a coconut-based broth. Very, very different broth from the laksa. Creamy, all the aromatics are coming out. A hint of lemongrass as well, and the potatoes. The potatoes are so soft. Part of what makes this dish creamy is I think some of the starch from potatoes as well as the chicken that's been stewed low and slow so all the collagen is coming out and you can see kind of the fat rising to the top as well as some of the sambal added in as well so it adds another dimension of flavor. I'm gonna have it with some rice and some pickles. Mm. And I gotta have a bite of this chicken. Wow. The chicken just immediately falls off the bone. So good. Now we have our rendang chicken with nasi lemak. We also have some sambal because you need sambal in your life. I honestly love sambal because there's so many different variations of it. For those who are not familiar with sambal, it's chili paste and you can add whatever you want to add in. My favorites are the ones that are a bit more fishier, like this one for example has whole anchovies. And you can think of it as like a condensed spicy fish sauce. And you kind of put it on the side of every dish to kind of like, you know, make each bite a little different. Sometimes you want a little more fish sauce, sometimes you want a little more heat, all that. And I think that's what I really, really love about Indo-Malay cuisine is that the sides, the condiments, it all kind of creates a harmony together. And I think this rice is um, slightly colored with pandan. It has a little green hue to it. This also looks scrumptious. My favorite part is definitely, you know, the rice absorbing the juices. I'm definitely team carbs over protein. Wow, so good. This rendang chicken feels like a marriage between curry chicken as well as the laksa. 
It's a bit more sweeter. There's more coconut, a bit less spice, but very, very creamy stew. I'm so full. Team, you gotta help me out. Let's eat. Doobies, it's a full moon party. Look at this. What a fun night. Very, very fun night. Great food, great atmosphere, incredibly kind people. My first day here, I really just wanted to try everything and everything was too good. Now we're just gonna go head back to the hotel and uh, maybe go for a cheeky little swim, eh? Boo! <laughs> <laughs>